In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a beautiful hero section with a video background and a gorgeous grid on top of it. And we will build it with Elementor Pro. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the digital alchemist. And today I'm going to teach you how to create a professional level homepage and more specifically the hero section, which is the top section that you see on most homepages. Now, for this tutorial, I take the example of an architecture business, but you may replace it with any industry. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at what we're going to build and let me refresh the page and pay attention to the image that first loads. So let me refresh. And as you can see, we have a static image and then the video starts and we have the video background. And then on top of it, we have this structure here. Next, this is the tablet version and the same thing happens. And last but not least, the mobile version. Now there are other elements on this page like this mouse scroll animated icon. Then we have an image, some text, some more images. And if I go on top, I can open this gorgeous looking split menu. Let me show you one more time. And if you want to know how to recreate this menu, I'll talk about it later in this video. But today we're really going to focus on the hero section, what you see here, this structure with the video background. Okay, let's talk about what we need to complete this project. So I'm using the Astra theme, the free version. So you may as well install it if you want to follow along. And then in terms of plugins, I'm using Elementor and Elementor Pro. And if you're serious about web design and you don't have Elementor Pro yet, you'll find a handy link in the description below. Now, the only reason why I recommend Elementor Pro is because I absolutely love it and recommend it all the time. And it gives a little kickback if you purchase through my link. And that, my friend, allows me to keep on creating free content just for you. Okay, next, let's create our homepage. So in WordPress, you want to go to Pages, Add New, and then you want to close this and give it a title. I'm going to call it My Home. Then click on Publish and click on Edit with Elementor. Okay, so as you can see, I already have a custom header and a custom footer, and I'll talk about that later, but you don't need any of that. You can just use what you currently have. Now, the first thing we want to do is to give that edge all around our design. So you can't really see it here because it's white on white, but here you can see on the left, right, top and bottom, there is some spacing all around. Now you can either do this at page level or in my case, I would do this on the whole of the website. So let's go back to Elementor and there are a couple of ways we can do this. Either we can do this at page level and this is if you're only going to use this style for the home page and not for the other pages. And in that case, you wanna click on the gear icon at the bottom left corner. Then you wanna to go to advanced custom CSS and then you're just going to copy the code from the companion blog post and paste it right here. And as you can see now, there is an edge all around the header and the footer and of course the content. But like I said, in my case, I want to do this on all of the website. So I'm going to remove this. Let me save my work. Okay, if I want to do this at a global level, you want to click on the hamburger icon in the top right corner. Then you want to go to site settings, custom CSS. And once again, you're going to copy the code from the blog post and paste it right here. Next, you want to click on update and now we can close this. Okay, so now we're back to editing our page. Okay, let me save my work. Okay, next we want to create our section by clicking on the plus sign and we want to select this structure here. So 50% for the first column and 25 and 25 for column two and three. And before we move on, we want to change a few things. So you want to click on the responsive icon in the bottom left corner of the window. And next you want to click on the tablet icon. Then you want to select the first column and make sure where it says column width that you type 100%. Do the same thing for the second column, third. And now if you go into mobile mode, it should be the same. It's already set. So 100% for each column. Okay, let's go back into desktop mode and you want to open the navigator. So you can click on the icon at the bottom left corner of the window or you can use command plus I on a Mac or control plus I on a Windows PC, actually even on a Linux PC. Okay, next we want to rename our column. So I'm going to double click on the name of the column and it's going to be call one and I'm just going to repeat the process for the other column. So call two and call three. Okay, now let's make sure that we select our section on top here in the navigator. And then on the left hand side where it says layout, we can start styling our section. 
So first of all, the content width should be full width. The minimum height should be in VH, 70 VH, and our column position should be set to stretch. Next, let's move to the style tab, then click on background. For the background type, select video, and then you want to paste the URL of the video that you want in the background. So I'm going to paste mine. You can choose a start time as well as an end time. Then you have some more options. So I'm going to play it on mobile and I want to activate the privacy mode. Okay, now you can see the video starting. If it doesn't start, just save the page and refresh and it should work. Okay, next I want to add a background fallback image. So I'm just going to click on the plus sign and then I'm just going to pick an image in my media library. So what happens is that when the page loads, it's going to load the image first and then when the video is ready, it's going to play the video. Okay, let's update our work. Okay, next, still with our section selected, you want to go to the advanced tab and where it says margin, you want to unlink the values. So it's zero on the top and bottom and same for the padding. You want to unlink the values, so it's zero all around. Okay, next you want to click on the custom CSS sub tab and then you want to copy the code from the companion blog post and paste it here. So this is going to be the magic for the grid because we want the grid to look nice on the desktop, on tablet, and on the mobile. Okay, for the rest of the tutorial, I'm just going to remove the video just for the time being because it might be a bit disturbing while we're creating the tutorial, and then I'll put the link back at the end. So let me go back to style, background. I'm just going to remove the URL, and it's gonna fall back on the fallback image. Okay, next, let's start taking care of our first column. So for that, I'm going to click on the widgets icon. Then I'm just going to drag a heading widget in the first column. I'm going to change the text. Now you can't see anything because it's blue on blue. So to fix that, you want to go to style. So first of all, we're going to change the color. Okay, next where it says typography, I'm just going to click on the edit icon and I'm going to give it a size of 40 pixels. Okay, with that out of the way, let me select my first column by clicking on the column icon and where it says vertical align. I want to align it to the bottom. Okay, next you want to click on the style tab, then click on background and where it says background type, you want to click on classic, but we're not going to give it any color. We just did this so that we now have the background overlay sub tab. Let me show you. If I remove this, there's no background overlay. So once again, let me click on it and now we can click on the background overlay sub tab. Okay, this time I'm going to select classic and then I'm going to give it a color. So I'm going to use my main color and where it says opacity, I'm going to give it 0.9. Now you may want to play with this depending on which color you're going to use. Now where it says hover, I'm going to click on classic one more time, pick a different color. And once again, I'm going to put the same value that I picked for the normal state. So now when I hover over the first column, as you can see, there's a different in the shade of blue. Now it's all blue and blue because I'm in prototype mode, but by the end of this video, I will show you with the final design. Okay, next, still with our first column selected, you wanna click on the border sub tab. So let me zoom in a little bit. Where it says border type, you wanna select solid, and then you wanna click on the link icon to unlink the values. And we're going to give it 10 pixels on top and 10 pixels on the right, then zero, zero. And for the color, I'm going to select white. And as you can see, we have our border here on the right hand side and on top. Okay, let me zoom back out and let's go into tablet mode with the responsive modes. And still in our border sub tab, you want to unlink the values and this time it's gonna be 10 pixels on top and zero for the rest of the values. And if we go into mobile mode, it's exactly the same. So 10 on top and zero for the rest of the values. Okay, let's go back to desktop mode. And next you wanna click on the advanced tab. And here you wanna click on the link icon to unlink the margin value so that it's zero all around. And for the padding, you just wanna type 40. So it's gonna be 40 pixels all around for the desktop version. Now for the tablet version is going to be the same. And let's go into mobile mode. And for the mobile mode, it's going to be a bit different. So we're going to unlink the values and then click one more time to relink it. And then just type 20 pixels and it's going to be 20 pixels all around. And now as you can see, we got some nice spacing around the title. Okay, let's zoom back out and let's go back into desktop mode. 
Okay, next where it says CSS classes, you wanna type my-main, exactly as you see it on screen. Now this is crucial if you want the magic to happen. Okay, let's zoom back out and now we want to take care of our column number two. So for that, once again, you wanna click on the widgets icon and then you wanna drag a heading widget in column number two. We're gonna change the text to services in my case, maybe different for you. Then you wanna click on the style tab, change the color, I'm going to pick a light color. Okay, with that out of the way, we want to select our column number two. So I'm going to click on the column icon. Then where it says vertical align, I wanna select bottom. Next, I wanna to go to the style tab, click on background, click on classic just to activate the background overlay. Then I'm going to click on background overlay and where it says background type, I'm going to pick classic. For the color, I'm going to pick my main color. And for the opacity, in my case, is going to be 0, 0,9. Then I'm going to click on hover, background type classic. I'm going to pick another color. And once again, in my case, it's going to be 0, 0,9. Next, I want to click on the border sub tab. Border type should be solid. Next, I'm going to unlink the width values and give it 10 pixels on top, 10 pixels on the right hand side, then zero at the bottom, zero on the left. And for the color, it's going to be white. Next, I'm going to click on the responsive icon, go into tablet mode, and I'm going to unlink the values. And this time it's going to be 10 pixels on top and zero for the rest of the values. And if I go into mobile mode, it's already set. It's the same thing, 10 pixels on top and zero for the rest of the values. Okay, let's go back into desktop mode. Okay, next you wanna click on the advanced tab and where it says margin, I'm going to unlink the value so that it's zero all around. And for the padding, I'm gonna type 40 pixels and it's going to be 40 pixels all around. Now let me click on the responsive icon. So for the tablet, it's the same thing. And it's going to mobile mode and link the values, relink it. Then where it says top, you wanna add 20 pixels, it's gonna be 20 pixels all around. And next, where it says CSS classes, you wanna type the name of the class, my-alternate. And make sure you spell it exactly like this if you want the magic to happen. Okay, let's zoom back out and let's go back into desktop mode. Let's save our work. Okay, and for the time being, I'm just going to close the navigator. And now it's the time to take care of column number three. So first of all, let me click on the widgets icon. Then I'm going to drag an inner section into column number three. And we'll take care of this inner section a little bit later. So for now, we want to select column number three. So click on the icon, but make sure you don't select the column from the inner section. So it's this column here. And with our column selected, you want to go to the style tab then go straight to border and for the border type is going to be solid and then you want to click on the icon to unlink the value so it's going to be zero all around and you want to change it to 10 pixels on the top and zero for the rest of the values and then for the color i'm going to select white and next you want to click on the advanced tab and where it says margin i'm just going to unlink the value so that it's zero all around and same thing for the padding Okay, so now let's take care of our inner section. So I'm just going to select the inner section by clicking on the six dots. And in the advanced tab, I'm just going to unlink the margin values and unlink the padding value so that it's zero all around. And next you wanna make sure that you remove the second column within the inner section. So I'm going to right click on it and hit delete. Okay, next I'm going to copy the heading from column number two. So I'm just going to right click on it, hit copy. And then I'm going to place my mouse in the column within the inner section, right click and paste. So I'm just going to change the text to portfolio. And next I want to select the column within the inner section. So once again, let me open the navigator with command plus I on a Mac or control plus I on a PC, because that's going to make it easier to target what we want to target. So we want to select the column within the inner section. So as you can see here, column number three, intersection, and we want to select this column. So let me select it from here. And now with our column selected, I can start styling it. So let me move the navigator. And first of all, you want to go to the advanced tab and where it says CSS classes, you want to type my dash secondary. And once again, you need to make sure it's spelled exactly like this if you want the magic to happen. So let me zoom back out. And here is the first part of the magic. And let's go back to the layout tab. So where it says vertical align, you want to select bottom. 
Then you want to click on the style tab, background, where it says background tab, you want to click on classic, but don't change anything here. So now we have our background overlay sub tab, click on classic, give it a color. I'm going to pick my main color and for the opacity, mine's going to be 0, 0,9. You know the drill now. Then I click on hover classic. I pick a different color. And once again, I change the opacity to 0, 0,9. Okay, next, let's go back to the advanced tab and where it says margin, I want to click on the icon to unlink the values and where it says padding, I'm going to type 40 so that it's 40 pixels all around. Now it's the same thing for the tablet, but let's go into mobile mode. I'm going to unlink the values, then click one more time to relink it. I'm just going to type 20 and now it's 20 pixels all around. Okay, let's close the navigator and as you can see, it's starting to look good. Okay, let's go back into desktop mode. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on the intersection and then I'm just going to hit duplicate. And now as you can see, we duplicated the intersection and our structure is almost ready. Okay. So first of all, let me change the text. This is going to be about us in my case, and I'm going to select my intersection number two. Then I'm going to go into the style tab border and where it says border type, I'm going to select solid. Then I'm going to click on the icon to unlink the values and it's going to be 10 pixels on top and zero for the rest. And then for the color it's going to be white. And as you can see, our design is looking good. So let me show you. So this is what we wanted to build almost I'm just going to add some more spacing at the bottom. So let me go back and this time I'm going to select my main section, go to advanced and where it says margin for the bottom value, I'm going to type 10 pixels. Okay. Let me click on update. Now let's take a look. Yeah. Looking good. Okay. Let's go back and still with our main section selected, you want to go to the style tab background, and I'm just going to paste back the URL of the video I want in the background. And as you can see, it's looking good. Okay, now this is the design I've come up with and basically all I did was changing the font, the colors and my own images. So let me go back. If I go into the site settings, global colors, as you can see, I put my own colors and same thing for the font. If you go into global font, I change the main font to the one I preferred. So it's all about styling. But if you followed along and managed to create this, you can totally build this. So let's take a look at our tablet version. As you can see, it's looking good. So the first block or the first column is bigger. And then we have the remaining three columns that are smaller, but you can still see the video in the background with the structure on top. You see the whole video and that's the whole purpose of this tutorial. And the same goes if we move into mobile mode. So technically we have three columns, but it looks like we have four blocks stacked on top of each other can still see everything with the video in the background and the structure on top. And with the final design, if you go into tablet mode, you can see how it looks with colors, with a different color scheme. And this is the mobile version. Now you may have noticed in my final demo that the columns are clickable. Well, I created a couple of tutorials about that if you want to know how to do it. So I'm just going to link it in the description below. Now you may also have noticed this animated scroll mouse icon. Well, lucky you, because guess what? I also created a tutorial about that and I'll link it in the description below. And last but not least, you must have noticed this gorgeous split screen, full screen menu. Let me show you one more time. So if you're interested about learning how to create this, well, the tutorial is going to be released soon and probably even already available by the time you watch this video. And of course, I will link it in the description below. Now there is one more thing that you can do and it's simply to give this video a thumbs up. It's only going to be a split second for you, but that's going to change so many things for this channel. Now design can make or break a website and I created the brand identity guidelines that you can download on my website for free. Initially it was made for affinity designer, but you can use it with Adobe illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to kissinia.com forward slash branding and follow the instructions on screen. Now, if you want more web design goodness and tutorials coming your way, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Now, I can't wait to see what you're going to come up with. And don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, 
Take care and stay safe.